Well, hello everybody. How y'all been? I was planning on going out today, and I thought about making this video for the last couple of days, because it's been a while. It's cold as fuck up here today, let me tell you. I mean, it's only 50-something degrees, but it's cold 50-something degrees. And I know it's been a couple weeks since I've made the last video. The last video I think I made, I made over at the Friendship Shell stage. Since then, I've been working really hard on me. On learning how to control my feelings. How to let things go. It ain't easy. I don't see. Well, last night, though, I got a phone call from one of uh, what I call my nephew's sons. He's my nephew. And over the years, though, he's been like my son. And he was not happy. He was pissed off at his dad, at my brother. And I don't even know everything that happened between them. I just know that my brother's doing something that he's not supposed to be doing. He's probably doing multiple things he's not supposed to be doing. And it got to my nephew so bad that he had to call me 500 miles away. And I don't know what he thought I was going to be able to do for him besides listen. But that's really all he needed me to do last night was just listen and remind him. I love you. Regardless of what anybody else is doing, and regardless of what anybody else is saying, he needed to hear his auntie mama say, but baby, I love you. I love you. I know you don't feel like everybody else loves you, but your auntie mama loves you. And he's 17, he just turned 17. And in Ohio, without going through the courts for emancipation or having somebody else willing to take him in, which he doesn't have. I mean, I would in a heartbeat, but I don't. I'm not stable enough to take him in. And I would in a heartbeat. Because he's not a bad kid for me. Other people say he's a bad kid. Other people say all kinds of shit about him. Uh, Y'all can see I got layers because that's how cold I am. And I'm sitting outside smoking. But seriously, other people say all kinds of shit about my, this kid. But this kid, nobody ever seems to think about what this kid, this 17 year old child, who was filled with so much disappointment, so much anger, and so much hate. Because that's it's really all he's ever done. He's known very little love. He's had people who love him, but the way they show their love is not because I can't understand why they, everybody says this. This kid does these things and these things and these things when he's with them, but when he's with me, all I have to say is, "Hey, baby, can you go grab this for me?" And he jumps, man. He jumps so fast, it's not even funny. You know we don't behave that way. If he's doing something, he knows he's not supposed to be. That's all I have to say to him. Don't make me get up. Don't make me come down there. Because this child knows Auntie Mama don't play. I'm not playing stupid games with him. I'm trying to teach this child how to be a man. Like I've taught my boys. Like I'm still teaching my youngest boy who's younger than my nephew. How to be a man and not an oversized child. I'm a female. Do you know how hard it is for a female? To teach a male how to be a man? 
especially when most of the male role models that he's had in their lives have not been men. They've been males. And they've been around. But they're not men. Yeah. I was raised with four older brothers. I was raised with four out of seven of my male cousins around. One of those four is down from. Uh, he was man. My cousin Mark was a man. I knew him to walk to work miles to work every day because he didn't have a car. He didn't have a license. And he still got up and it didn't matter if it was rain, shine, snow on the ground, ice. He needed to go to work. He needed to get there. He walked. And he passed away about five years ago. Almost six, I think. He was a good man. He used to work more than one job at a time. He had a factory job and he had a bouncing job. He worked at a bar as a bouncer, as a protector. Yeah, you know, he was one of those that would walk the girls out to their cars if they didn't feel safe. He was one of those that would break up fights and he was one of those that would stop the males from being nasty to the women. And I can't tell you how many times I went in that bar he worked in and I knew I was safe. No matter what I decided to do that night, I knew I was safe. Why? Well, because my big cousin was watching over me. He was like another big brother. He wasn't going to let a goddamn thing happen to me. Ever. Like, seriously, ever. He worked with a guy who asked him for my phone number once. And my, my cousin trusted him enough to give it to him. And we, me and the guy talked for a minute. And what the guy turned out to be sketchy. He put on a good facade about being a good guy. But when it came down to it, uh, I had to put more power behind my no that I ever should have. On our first date, we ended up going to that bar because he got caught in work. Afterwards, that guy kept trying to talk me to go to a hotel instead of taking me back home like he promised. So I got to the point where I said, either you take me back home or I get out of this car and I walk to my cousin's house. Now, I had to make a threat. And the thing is, the guy who picked me up was about, I don't know, five foot five, maybe. My cousin was six foot something and outweighed that other guy by at least a good 150 pounds. So when I said, don't make me get out of this fucking car and walk to my cousin's, my cousin's house was only a couple miles away. I could have made it. I would have made it. And he knew better. Because he knew. That's what I mean by that. that my cousin was a man. Because my cousin would have protected me and defended me. My cousin would have... If, my, if, I, if I ever told my cousin any other shit, he would have been one pissed off man at that other male. Because that's not how we play these games. And I have a general idea what's going on with my brother. But I don't know for a fact. Because he's not talking to me. He's not talking to me because he knows I'm going to be disappointed. Yes, Charles. I'm not stupid. I know why you're not talking to me. I know... That you're doing dumbass shit, and you know when I hear about it, 
And when I find out about it, I'm going to be highly disappointed. And I'm going to be highly pissed off. And you know baby sister is not the person to piss off. Especially when it comes to the kids. Especially when it comes to my nephew's sons. I have a thing about the boys. Your son wants to run away from you right now. He's 17. And he is so upset with you. He wants to run away. And I get it. God, do I ever get it. Because at 17, at 16, at 15, at 14... I wanted to run away too. Hell, I'm 39 years old and I just left Ohio to live. So I was just listening to this uh, sermon from Preacher Stephen. And he was talking about how when Jesus was trying to stay away from Judea, but his brothers kept saying, well, you can do all these miracles. You can do all these wonderful things. Prove it. Go to Judea. Go to the feast. Don't do it in secret. Do it out loud. Prove it. Because even Jesus' brothers didn't believe that he was as blessed as he was. Wait, what? You mean the family of Jesus Christ, miracle worker that he was, his own family didn't have faith? In him? Damn, Jesus. I feel you. I feel you, baby. My brother in Christ. I do understand. And it hurts, man. Do you guys understand how bad it hurts when the people that you love the most don't have faith in you? Don't have a belief in you. Have done nothing their entire lives except for. Try their damnedest. To destroy you. To make your life on their game plan and not yours. But you guys got to remember. God has a plan for every single fucking one of us. And it is not on another human. To tell you what your game plan is. Your game plan is in God's hands. As the saying goes, as you're making plans, God is laughing. Well, he sure as fuck laughed his ass off at me and my plans. I had big plans, man. I had a lot of big plans. Big ideas. Oh, I mean, over the years, I keep having more and more big plans and more and more big ideas of things that, well, maybe I'm supposed to be doing this. God said no. You're not. And many years ago, I was in a Walmart in Maysville, Kentucky. And I was walking around. My two oldest boys were babies. We had just moved to Maysville, so they would put them about around two to three years old. Not quite two to three because their birthdays hadn't came yet. They were about a month or so away. We, like, moved to Maysville in June. My, old, my middle boy turns the next year older in July and my oldest turns the next year older in August they are Irish twins they are ten and a half months apart so for a whole month and a half I have two kids that are the same age every year it's kind of cool kind of like what the fuck but so I'm walking around Walmart with one of the kids in the cart with me and my babies, I make some cute babies. Well, I did. I can't do it anymore. I don't have the equipment anymore. They took it due to, I was a stage away from cervical cancer. They caught it. 
they took my shit. They left me my ovaries so I don't have to do hormone replacement therapy. But when I could make kids, I made three absolutely gorgeous little boys. My heart, my soul, my spirit, my mind, my life. And these kids don't understand that right now because they're kids. They're young adults. Two of them are. One of them's a kid. And they don't quite get just what they mean to a mama yet. One day. One day they'll get it. I let them know every time, all the time. All the time. I love you. I support you. In your good behaviors. Gabriel. Michael and James. I support your good behaviors. I support your dreams. Michael wanted to be a fucking Marine and he's a Marine. He's a Lance Corporal now. He might be getting ready to get moved up for all I know because I mean, ever so often they move him up again. And I think he's I think he's close to it. I think he said before he actually shipped out he was going to be moved up again. Well, I'm not sure. I had my oldest at 16. I had my second at 17. See, here's the thing. Nobody else might have faith in those boys. But I sure as fuck do. I am their mother. And I know what it's like to have a mother who does not have faith in you. I know what it's like to have family who think you're nothing but a failure. I know. I know what it's like be surrounded by people who you do not want to be around. So as the preacher was talking today, and he was talking about Jesus went to Judea in secret. He went to the feast. But see, he knew that he was doing just fine in Galilee. He knew the people believed him there. He knew he had work to do. He knew where he was supposed to be. And the thing is that it was John chapter 6 where he said, My time has not right yet. The right time for me has not come yet. The right time for you is any time. I have work to do and I know what I need to do. I know where I need to go. I know the things that need to be done. I know how to keep myself away from the places and the people who will hurt me. And the things that will kill me. I know how to keep myself from my own personal health. question is, do you? Do you know how to keep yourself from going into your own personal health? Do you know how to keep yourself from going down that hole? You know, I've come to a realization that I've, I've talked to a lot of people over the last couple of weeks. I go around down and I'm, I'm singing and I'm dancing. I, my voice still sounds smoky. But last night, I was right over here across the street at this thing. It was like old pavilion, flea market pavilion thing. And I was just practicing. It was the middle of the night. And I was belting out songs because nobody around. Middle of the night. And I went down the street so that I wasn't bothering the neighbors right here at the house. Because middle of the night, the guy lives across the street, gets up early as fuck to go to work. Got the girls that live next to him. One of them I know works at the hospital, if not two of them work at the hospital because I see them leaving every day. I'm out here at all times of day, and I, I didn't want to bother them with my voice, even if it's not bad. 
people don't want to hear other people singing at 2 o'clock in the morning. The little pavilion thing, though, you really can't hear people. You can. It's great acoustic. It's great uh, resonating sound. But I'm used to people telling me, I can't even hear you when you're singing. I don't hear you when you're playing your music, and I don't hear you when you're singing. So what shocked me last night was this girl showed up. Well, she's not a girl. She's older than I am. She's a woman. She showed up out of the blue. It's 2 o'clock in the morning over here. And in between songs, because I had my headphones in, I heard a voice. So I took my headphone out. I said, hey, did I just hear somebody? You too, sir. I said, did I just hear somebody? I mean, it is 2 o'clock in the morning. I am keeping my eyes open for people. I had thought I had seen shadows. <coughs> but people would just walk through all the time and ignore me, so... I wasn't paying any damn bit of attention. I didn't. I wasn't there for other people. I was there for me. I was there because there. I was listening to um, "I Have Nothing" by Whitney Houston. And standing here on the porch, I knew I could hit the notes, but I knew if I did hit the notes, I was gonna wake neighbors up. So I went a little bit up the street. Well, that was the song she heard me belting out. And I thought I sounded like shit because I could hear myself when I, my voice broke on a couple of notes. And I thought it sounded like crap. And she's went, that was amazing. Excuse me? She said, I heard you over two blocks away. And she's talking about the other direction. She said, I was over on the other side of rallies. You know, there's a rally. It's about a, it's a block over and a block down. She was on the other side of rallies. Coming back from 7-Eleven. Yep, we have those up here. And she could hear me. From two blocks away. She followed my voice. She was walking home. She wasn't walking to where I was. But she uh, followed the music. I do it all the time. I hear music from the bars down the street, and I'll turn my music off, and I'll go walk and follow that music, and it, sometimes it leads me down there to that friendship shell stage, and sometimes I just walk around, sometimes I come right back home, because by the time I make it to the music, the music stuff. But I play follow the music all the time. Sometimes it leads me just to the cricket strip and the water bubble. I walk to the river. You can hear the water hitting the rocks if, you're, if you listen and you're quiet. You can hear the ducks quack and you can hear the the cranes that my friend says sound like a velociraptor. They do. They, they, they really they sound like a velociraptor that we hear on TV. No, I don't know if that's what an actual velociraptor sounds like when they were living. But that's what the cranes sound like. The Canadian geese. You can hear the fish jump out of the water, and you might even be able to see them if you're paying attention. In the middle of the night, there's not much traffic noise to be hearing, but like right now, I can hear all kinds of it from the main road, a couple of streets up. But last night, that was cool as fuck, man. I thought I sounded like shit. I keep saying I'm not ready to record myself yet because I don't feel like I sound good enough. I still hear the damage. But I keep, keep, keep getting told, you sound amazing. You sound great. But I hear my new voice. And this is not my voice. My voice used to be softer. Even with smoking for so many years. Oh, but something else happened when I was talking to that lady last night. And like I said, I was over there for me. I wasn't over there to perform 
for anybody else. I was over there practicing for myself. And she kept asking me to, to play, to sing different songs because my voice sounded, she thought it would sound good to play a, a, a Temptation song, Janis Joplin, Four Non Blondes. And I know these people and I know their music, but their music isn't the music that I sing to. Last night especially, last night I was in a country mood. Last night I was in an 80s to 90s, maybe some early 2000s female country. The shit I grew up on. And I was just pulling songs up on my app, uh, the YouTube music app. And she's like, well, you got a lot of songs in there. I, said, I don't have these downloaded, this is an app. Somebody else downloaded all this shit. I just hit play. I look up the song. I find the song I want to listen to and sing it. I hit play. Somebody else has already put in all that hard work. I'm just reaping the benefits from it. I'm using it to practice. Now, I'm not a soprano anymore, but I am a high alto. I can hit, almost hit those sopranos notes. Again. Almost. I don't know if I'll ever will be able to again. Like, not like I used to. I used to be able to hit some of them high ass notes. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that one again. But she, she told me, now see, last week I went to the, a thrift store to get, to see if they had any clothes, because my clothes don't fit me no more. And it's right here at the corner. It's actually right across from where I was sitting at last night. So I went there, and the ladies there told me, well yeah, you should check out the Players Club. Bay City Players Club. So I have. I gotta get online, I gotta do a registration form, blah blah blah, and thing for that. And she's, the lady said from there, and she'd get back with me. Well, this lady last night said there's a bar that does karaoke and, like, open mic night. And that they do tryouts on Monday and Tuesdays. So, I think I'm going to go check it out. I still need more practice, don't get me wrong, but... I've been attracting crowds when I sing lately and when I dance. I've had people who have seen me out singing and dancing come up to me the next day and have conversations with me. So if they feel that I'm doing okay, we'll see. And eventually I am going to make a video and put it up here so that you guys can see. Because you're not in Bay City. Some of you are in Ohio and some of you are in Kentucky and some of you are in Florida. Maybe even California. But, just like Jesus said, time for me has not come yet. The time for you is any time. The time for you to get up off your ass. Make changes. The time for you to stop saying that, well, I have to have this. It's the only way I can function. Really? I mean, I can say I have to have coffee in order to function, but I've proven to myself that I don't. I've had doctors tell me I need to have Ritalin in me to, in order to be not normal and calm. Guess what I haven't had? Ritalin. I 
eh, a couple times last week because I was still coping and dealing with a few things and it did make it easier. But it was only like two days last week that I took one. I don't like being on a narcotic. I don't like the idea of it. And I definitely don't like somebody telling me I had to take something every motherfucking day. Kiss my ass. The fuck I do. There are other ways. And the first one to do is to deal with your shit. Because once you deal with your shit, and it's not sitting in here anymore. When you process it and you work through it and you get to the other side of it, well then it's not sitting here anymore. You've unloaded it. Now, I have a notebook full of my thoughts. I have another book full of good thoughts because I promised my friend I would only write good things in it. And that's what I've worked on. Just the good. My notebook is my therapy notebook. It, it's all of my negative thoughts. I've even wrote some songs in that one that go along with my negative thoughts. And I have another notebook sitting right there ready for me to start writing in it. I have put massive hours into myself. Not to be conceited. I, I, I'm, you guys don't ever hear me tell you that I'm the hottest thing in fucking, that's ever came. I know I'm not. I know by society standards, men and women both find me pretty. They tell me regularly. They tell me. I. I see my age. And I don't know I don't have to wear makeup to look better. I could wear makeup to look healthier. Not better. All makeup would do for me would be to cover up those dark circles under my eyes and maybe put a little bit of color in my cheek. But I think of makeup as a mask. When you cake yourself full of it to look like a different person, it's a mask. It tells me you're not ready to be you. And people, they will shine it up and they will say, well, no, it's a form of self expression. Really? sure? Positive? I mean, sounds good. But are you absolutely positive that that's what that is? A form of self-expression? Try to get my phone to stay up because I'm wanting to do something. not wanting to behave. Stay. I mean, like, seriously, are we all serious about makeup as a form of self-expression? Because I walk around here all the time with no makeup on. And the only thing that I'm changing is my clothes. What, y'all think I'm good? You think I'm kidding? Okay, so for everybody who's ever known me, am I fake? There is one word you can't use with me to describe me ever. 
I sure as fuck ain't fake. What you see is what you get. If I look pissed off, I'm probably pissed off. Doesn't mean I'm gonna be mean. Just means I'm mad. I'm allowed to get mad. I'm allowed to be upset. I'm allowed to get sad. I'm allowed to be happy. Oh! There's one for everybody. Jessica is allowed to be happy. I'm allowed. By human right. By being a human being and having the emotion in the fucking first place. I'm allowed to be happy. And just because I'm chronically ill doesn't mean that I had to sit my ass on a couch every fucking day either. And some people seem to think that that's what that means. Oh, well, you're ill? You're disabled? That means you need to sit your ass down then. You don't need to be doing nothing. You know what happened when I sat my ass down? Me sitting my ass down and not moving? Damn near killed me. Me having people tell me, well, don't do that. Only made me weaker. And that's how y'all wanted me. Weak. Dying. Dependent. Did it fuck you up when I didn't die? Did it fuck you up when I kept pushing through? Did it fuck up your plans? When I decided I wanted something different from myself? Mom, tell me. Are your plans fucked now? Because I'm not sitting there doing what you want me to. Because the last time I checked, you ain't me. And you ain't God. You might be the devil. Reincarnated. You might be the Antichrist. Coming to destroy the world. But you ain't me. And you sure the fuck ain't God. But God said, Jessica, breathe. Yes, God. God said, Jessica, know your worth. Then charge tax. Yes, God. Jessica, take the time to rest. I mean, get your ass up. Start dancing with the devil. Show him who the better singer and dancer is. Just like Johnny did when he came on down to Georgia with that fucking golden fiddle. I mean, me and the devil have danced a lot. For weeks now. It's been one long-ass battle. Back and forth. And I ain't got no golden fiddle to show you. What I do have is an eight-pack. And it's hanging underneath the layer of skin, though, because... I've lost so much fucking weight and I've burned off so much fat that I have a layer of loose skin. I was never meant to be 180 pounds. I was never meant to be as big as I was. I'm supposed to be between 125 to about 140. I was 40 pounds at minimum overweight. And everybody was happy about it. Why? 
because it took away from my natural looks, from how I'm supposed to be. Everybody kept saying, Jessica, you need to gain more weight. My doctor says, no the fuck I don't. God says, no the fuck she don't. And I'm telling you, kiss my lily white ass and no the fuck I don't. I'm at the point now where I do need to start putting on some more calories. I burnt them all off. But I do not need to be 180 motherfucking pounds. I do not need to be bigger than what I actually am to make you feel better about you. Got a problem with yourself? Go look in the mirror and deal with it. I ain't your scapegoat. I'm not your punching bag. I'm not your walking mat. Welcome, Matt. For you to wipe your mud and shit covered shoes on. It's not Jessica. It's not Mama Cook. I am a mama. My last name is Cook. I am Mama Cook. I am Mama Jessica Cook. People want to call me shortened names by Jess or Jesse. Yeah, I mean, fine, okay, whatever. But you might want to watch it, especially if you call me Jesse. Remember, Jesse's a mean bitch. She tolerates nothing. The rest of us try to keep her in check. But she does get protective. Defensive. She will bite. Sometimes she'll bite first. And you always got a problem with her. But you, I mean, you love her until she slips to you. But, you know, Jesus did end up proving his power that he was blessed with, that God said, you are my child, and because you are my child, you have special abilities. You can heal the sick, raise the dead, turn water into wine. You can lead people into salvation. If they want to listen. Because, <laughs> I guess, as he said, eat from my flesh and drink from my blood. People weren't down for that. <laughs> I don't really think that's what he meant, though. I don't think he meant literal terms, eat from my flesh and drink from my blood. He turned water into wine. Drink his wine. Eat his flesh. Isn't that the bread that the Catholics pass out? At Mass? At Communion? Communion. I'm not Catholic, so I don't really know all their words. The little piece of bread. The wafer, the cracker. God said, you were all my children. You are all my children. But God said, I mean, yeah, he had a special hand in making Jesus. It was just a little extra. But God said, I've sent my son down to save you. I've sent my flesh to be sacrificed for your flesh. Eat from his flesh.
Instead, they hung him on a cross. They put a thorn crown upon his head. They nailed his hands and feet. They stoned him. They degraded him. God's flesh. They scarred his skin, tried to break his spirit, and at the end he said, it is done. I will die for your sins so that you may live sin free. And what the fuck did we go and do? Lord have mercy on all of us. What the fuck did the human race go do? We turned around. We took him off that cross. We wrapped him up in the crowd of, the shroud of turn. We put him in a fucking cave and closed it with a rock. We left him. For three motherfucking days did we leave him. In that cave. Presumed dead. And now medical science has proven he could have been almost dead and not necessarily been dead. Let's do reality here, okay? Let's do reality, not just what the Bible says. But in reality, he might not have actually been all the way dead. He might have just been close to it. And what he needed was three days of rest. Three days of rest to get back fuck up. Get back on his feet. And walk the fuck out of that cave on Easter Sunday. What we consider Easter Sunday. The day of the resurrection. After three days of being in that cave in that darkness. Wrapped up in that shroud. He's left. There. He did have visitors I believe didn't he? Did his mother come? Mary Magdalene. Didn't she come? Weren't they the ones that realized that he wasn't there anymore? When they came on that third day, he wasn't there. He got the fuck up. He said, fuck you. He said, fuck you to the entire human race. He said, I died for your sins. Go live better. Go do better. And instead, we fucked up the planet more times than I can even count. And in more ways than I can even count. We didn't just fuck up the planet. We fucked up ourselves. And then we fucked up other people. We lived in the most amount of sin that we possibly could. For the hell of it. For the thrill. Because living clean and living good just wasn't good enough. Living right. Just wasn't good enough, was it? Oh, and then we want to judge everybody else? Oh, well, I'm going to judge you and you and you and you because you're doing things I don't agree with, but I'm going to sit over here and I'm going to pump processed sugar and meat I'm not supposed to eat because it actually makes us sick. Hey, guys, just so you understand, nobody's actually supposed to eat Hamburger grease. Nobody. It is like one of the worst things you can put in your fucking system. It's probably the reason why most people have fucking gut and stomach issues. Just so you know. It's proven. Scientifically. For those who want to pay attention to science. Chicken and fish are about your healthiest food. Meats. Poultry. Poultry. And then you got one group of religious people who say, well, but he put it into the pigs. He took that sin from that one village. He took that darkness and, that, and he cast it out to the pigs. That's why the, uh, the ones over across the ocean. Somebody help me out here. That's why they won't eat pork. 
You know what's funny? Pork don't make me sick. But beef sure as fuck does. And yet they worship the cows and they say the pigs are the disgusting ones. Worship a cow, a bull. But the pigs are the nasty, dirty ones. Come on, little lambs. Think a little bit harder. A. Worship no animal. Ever. We don't worship animals. We can look to them for guidance. The natives have spirit guides, and most of them are through animals, but they don't worship that animal. They look to it as a guide. It is a spirit guide. Guide. To guide you forward. To where you need to go, where you're supposed to be. So we can look to them, we can look to the, the, the animals as spirit guides. We do not worship. You're going to worship an animal? You're going to destroy yourselves. Fill yourselves full of toxins. Yep, I know I'm about to too. Ah, but see, it's tobacco. It, yes, it's tobacco, but it's not as bad as the cigarettes that they add so much shit to and it doesn't have a cotton filter it's plastic I like the wood tips better man I seriously do but I didn't buy these and beggars can't be choosers he re asked me if I would like some and I said yes he went to the store on his own he came back. This is what he had. And I said, thank you for the gift. Because that's what it is. It's a gift. He doesn't have to buy these. I am not his responsibility to take care of in this way. If I want nicotine, it's my responsibility to go out and get it. Oh, but he loves me. And he's a sweetheart. And he does take care of me. I may not always agree with the way he's trying to take care of me. But in the end, if I listen to him, he knows what the fuck he's talking about because for some reason he knows what's better for me than I do. Most of the time. I've never met somebody, including my ex. And I thought my ex could read my mind because there was days that he just knew what I wanted. And he wasn't even home yet. Like he just knew on the way home, stop and pick me up something to drink or a, a certain kind of candy bar or whatever. Ah, but when I say that my sweetheart can read my goddamn mind, most of the time it's like we don't have to talk because we already have. He knows what I want, what I need, most of the time before I'm even knowing what the hell I want, what I need. Every morning, almost every single morning, unless he's just too tired, he makes me a plate of food. We don't eat at the same times. So I'm not hungry anymore. I have a plate of food in the fridge waiting for me to eat. He doesn't have to do that. I'm I'm a big girl. If I'm hungry, I can go make my own food. I know how to use a stove, pots and pans, and knife, spatulas. I know how to take this ingredient, that ingredient, that ingredient, that ingredient. Ooh, this seasoning too. Let's mix it all up. And I have done that once or twice since I've been here. But see, he loves cooking. 
He may not always feel like it in the morning sometimes. But he said last night, before he ever went to work, I'm gonna make chicken and fish tomorrow. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. what kind of fish? He said, cod. Now I know I'll eat his cod. I've ate it twice now, I know I'll eat it again. But he also made chicken, in case I'm not in the mood for fish. And he might have been in the mood for chicken for all I know, but I also know my man. He wouldn't have made both if it was just him. But he's trying to help me learn new foods. He's trying to get me back into the seafood that I didn't eat for the last five and a half years. He's pushed to get me healthy. Mentally, physically, emotionally. He doesn't try to keep me tied down, but he is an anchor. He keeps me grounded. And he's willing to share his dreams with me. What's funny though is his dreams and my dreams actually do come together. We have the same dream. for a private life. For our private life, it's the same dream. Ain't that sweet? And you all wonder why I call him a sweetheart. Because he's full of fucking heart. His heart is so full He's got so much love to give. But he learned a long time ago. Be choosy who you give it to. You can have love for all of humanity. You can want better for all of humanity. You can imagine a world full of peace. We talk about it often. Could you imagine if the wealthy spread their wealth out a little bit more instead of hoarding it like the greedy assholes that they are? Could you imagine if the Christians were actually Christians? If y'all got a little bit more spiritual? Not religious, spiritual. Could you imagine if there wasn't war? Wow, well, I do. I sit here and imagine all the time. I sit here and hope for it all the time. I know my baby is about to get shipped out. I know that in that year that he's gonna be gone, so much can happen because so much can happen in five minutes, let alone in a year. I had a dream about going out and seeing him one last time before he headed out, but it don't look like that's going to happen. But I'll be here when he gets back. And maybe by the time he gets back, things will be different. And I can have everything set up that when he ships in, I'm there at that dock waiting on him. Or I show up a couple days later. I can change my dream. I can switch it up a little bit. Change my timeline. It's not changing my dream, it's just changing my timeline. I wanted to be there before he shipped out. Well, now I'm, I'm gonna be there when he gets home. Come hell or high water. 
literally high water. He's going out on the ocean. So. <laughs> and I say hell is right here on earth. So I had to cross the earth to get to him because he's on the other side of the country. He is those of, yeah, United States. I still don't understand that one. How can we be united if it's states? We are one country, but we are multiple states. That tells me we're not united. It is not the United States of anything. It is the separated states that are just connected. We are one country, though. I mean, we are... America. We are a piece of North America because there's still Canada above us. Mexico. Ain't that all north? No, no, Mexico is what central. And you have South America. Okay, so. But we're just a piece of North America because there's still Canada above us. Is it, we are the country of the disconnected states of America. In order to be united, everybody has to be on the same page. And from what I hear, nobody is. You got a handful, maybe. So I got great hopes for this forward movement, or the forward campaign that's going out. Remember I tried to tell you guys about it? It's where the Republicans and the Democrats, they had a bunch of people who didn't agree with either the Republicans or the Democrats, and it was their party. So they left it, and they created a new party called the Forward Party. Because they want to fucking move forward. Fuck your left wing, fuck your right wing. We need a whole body for the wings to be attached to. Our country bird is an eagle, but the eagle is not just two wings. An eagle has a body that those wings are attached to, that they flap from, that those wings go up and down and it lifts the entire body. Well, so fuck your left wing and fuck your right wing. We need that body. We need this forward party. Because maybe they'll find that compromise that the left wing and the right wing can't seem to find on their own. Good luck to the forward party. You are definitely who I'm going to be paying attention to. I'd like to hear some more about you guys. I know you're new. You just got, like, put out there this year. I thought it was amazing news. Not the Liberal Party, not the, the Democratic, not the Republican, not the Independent. That one independent person who's thinking so much different than everybody else. No, there's a whole party of independent thinkers. Good luck, guys. I might come join your team. Seeing you some Toby Keith's Red, White, and Blue. Ah, uh, was that Toby Keith? Maybe. I know Toby Keith's got some great fucking American songs. Some very patriotic songs. I know I, I walked through Columbus one night singing one. Yeah, it's red white. I think it's red white blue. Sing your grand old flag. You're a grand old flag, you're a high-flying flag, and forever in peace may you wave. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the peace and the brave. Ah, oh, the free and the brave. Got my words mixed up. Home of the free and the brave. Does anybody actually feel fucking free? Yo, know, must be our keeps reminding me other countries have it worse than we do. I had to keep reminding him. We have it pretty fucking bad here some days too. Just because it looks pretty doesn't mean it is pretty. 
Our system is corrupt as fuck. Politicians are greedy and power hungry. That's it. They're human. Greed, power hungry, gluttony. The need to always have more. To never be satisfied with what you have. Yeah, I actually am satisfied with what I have. The only thing that I would really kind of like right now would be some clothes that fit me. But then again, these clothes that are too big make it really easy to add layers. They're going to come in handy this winter. Like I said, I've got layer upon layer upon layer going on up here. I've had three layers on shirts and his thick ass coat because I don't have a coat. I have a jean jacket up here. But it's it is a brisk, brisk. My hands are freezing. I I have my weighted blanket over my legs because like I only got pajama bottoms on. Yeah, I know it's like one o'clock in the afternoon, but it's cold and I ain't going nowhere. Anybody knows me knows I don't like the cold. Everybody should be surprised I'm even sitting here right now. You feel this wind? See this wind kicking? It's not nice. I had to put a windbreak up. Because it was like blowing straight here. and it, it was driving me insane. I don't think he let me say it, but... But yeah, I've spent the last couple of weeks working really hard on myself, mentally, physically, emotionally, to put in my body things that it actually needs. And I got sidetracked for a minute. And I had to tell a couple of people just just in the last couple of days. I'm sorry. I can't focus on you. I've been neglecting myself. I'm sorry, I can't come out today and play. My body is requiring rest and sleep. It says I've pushed it too hard for too long and I haven't taken my time to sit much. I haven't. He kept telling me on Sunday, we have nothing to do. I said, but my body will not let me sit. I have to go for a walk. Something is telling me to go for a walk. Well, let me to a car show a couple blocks away. So I got to go look at really pretty classic cars. He went to the grocery store and to the car wash and watched his pretty truck. She has a pretty truck. She has one pretty ass red stallion. Miss Silverado. She is pretty. But he went and he washed her and he went to Kroger and he got the last things that he needed to cook that day. And then he came back here while I was still out of the car show, while I was still out meeting new people, learning the history of a, a mini mark. Yeah, that was a pretty cool history. There's only like a hundred of them were made. There's only like 30 left in the United States, three in the UK, and this guy had one. I got to learn the history and read about it and see a really pretty little cute car. And then he told me the story behind the car and how he got the car. And that he's gotten rid of all his other classic cars except for the Mini Mark and like one or two other ones. But the Mini Mark is special to him. He said that was our ice cream getter. I said, what? He said, that was our ice cream getter. I said, I, so, so that's the car you and your wife go out on the Sundays and get ice cream with. He said, yeah, that's the car we did. This older gentleman started telling me about how sweet his wife was. And how they had had a rough life before they met. And when they met, they were singing bluegrass. 
they traveled around to different places and sang bluegrass together. And then he got into the race cars. And radio stations and all kinds of cool shit that him and his wife did together. And that they bought this mini mart, or he bought this mini mart, and that they would take it out on, we'll say Sundays, to go get ice cream. Oh, ain't that a sweet life. They have many good memories in that car. Until she passed away this past March. And he just cannot seem to get rid of that car. Well, of course not. How many sweet memories were made there? When he, I said, so when you drive that car, does it still feel like she's sitting next to you? Because that's the other lessons I've learned. Humans, we die. Our spirits, well, they keep going. As long as there's somebody around to remember us. That's why so many people fight so hard to get their name written down in history. Because as long as their name is remembered, their spirit never dies. Now, I've come up with a way of dealing with death. When the night sky is clear, I go out and I look at the stars and I find one. I have a few in particular that I, I can pick out no matter where I am. And I name them. And I talk to them. JW is up there, my daddy, my grandma's, my sister-in-law who passed away about six months ago, seven, almost seven months ago, her brother who just passed away within like the last month, I find their stars. Sometimes I sing to them. Sometimes they talk to me. If you listen to the music. When I'm thinking about them. Certain songs come on. JW and Freebird Man. Or simple man. That Leonard Skinner gets me every fucking time. My dad is just about every male country song that plays. Especially the ones that are talking about the love for their child. Or my love for him. They follow me, and they're there day or night. It, it, regardless if we can see them, we know the stars are still there. We know that if this sky turned from blue to black right now, 
stars would start shining. Hey, right now, during the time of day, it might be different to this constellations that are out there. I don't know. I might not be able to find my stars. But it could give me a whole new set of ones to start naming. And when I get mad and I start thinking about the bad shit, well, and I say people need to go to hell. Sorry, you guys are already there. Because God did not cast Morning Star from heaven into a different, whole other entity place. He cast him to the garden where he was able to shape shift. He could turn into that snake. He could turn into whatever the fuck he wanted to. He could shape shift. If you actually learn, everybody says, oh, well, the devil made me do it. Y'all don't even know who the devil is. The devil is your emotions. The devil is your sins. The devil is you. Go look in the mirror. You are your own devil. You might have other people around you who are just as evil. But when it comes to you... You are your own devil. Your reflection. When that 13 year old told me, but I don't want to look at myself. I don't like what I see. Oh, but a mirror only shows you what you look like, right? Don't it? Why don't you like what you see when you look in the mirror? It can't be because your looks. See, I avoided looking in the mirror for a long time, except for like, uh, to brush my hair out or something like that. Real quick, real quick looks. I don't have a problem with looking at myself anymore. I'm not conceited. I do not think I'm the most beautiful fucking person out there. I do not think I'm the nicest person out there. I can be nice. I can also be the most evil bitch you've ever met. Try me. Some of you already know. I can be the biggest sweetheart on this fucking planet. If you treat me right. I can also become the devil you don't want to know when you don't. I have no problems with calling people out on their shit. I have zero fucking problems with calling anybody out on anything. Including myself. You guys don't understand how many times a day I go, Jessica, just don't. Jessica, just stop. Jessica. Don't. Why are you doing this? Jessica. Stop, man. Now, a few weeks back, I had somebody tell me, well, Jessica, your way was just not the right way. I said, well, it might not have been my right, right way for that person. She said, no, well, it wasn't the right way for anybody. Well, then why didn't anybody open their motherfucking mouths when everything was going down? Why did everybody wait until later? Why... Until after everything was said and done. To come at me now to tell me, well, your way wasn't the right way. Why didn't anybody else step the fuck up? And I mean step up. Not come in for five seconds and then turn around and leave again. Not only on their timetables. Because I wasn't on my timetable. I was on God's timetable. I was on the universe's timetable. I was on this kid's timetable. And his father's and his brother's. And the neighbors.
The only thing that was ever on my timetable was my doctor's appointments. And hell, that's not even on my timetable. That's on the doctor's. That's from when they have openings. You know, it's because you call and you make an appointment. Well, they made appointments time for available for me. So, I mean, it was kind of my timetable. But it wasn't because I might not have been available at some of those times. And I had to, excuse me, I had to switch my schedule around. Oh, and then I had to beg and plead or ask. Oh, I'm not beg and plead. I just had to ask for rides to those appointments. So then again, I'm still on somebody else's timetable. Because if they didn't want to come pick me up at 45 minutes before my appointment, they wanted to pick me up an hour, well then I better be ready an hour before my appointment time. Even if it only took 20 minutes to get there and leaving 45 minutes early was still leaving twice as early as what needed to be. If they showed up an hour early, well I better fucking be ready. Because if I wasn't, I had to hear about it. Or they threatened to leave me. And that kid, one time, his daddy had handed me gas money to give to the neighbor. He handed me $20 because that was the smallest bill he had on me. And she was going to be giving me a couple rides that week. So, it, $20 would have covered it all. And I left it sitting on the coffee table in our home. Now, he handed it to me after the kids went to bed that night. And the next day, I get up. And the only people who have been in the home was his dad, me, his brother, who has never taken any money from me. Or from anybody he's the one who finds money and says hey is this yours and this one kid and the money was missing nothing else was missing just the money and they denied it he denied it he denied it and he denied it and he denied it and his brother found out about it his brother tried to cover his ass his brother tried to help hide it came out that he didn't only steal the money but he was hiding a cell phone that he knew he was supposed to ask permission before he had it and he didn't ask permission he hid it being sneaky a pack of cigarettes came up missing and his dad thought that I had them or that my friend's son had them that my friend's son had brought them to me he didn't brought them to me and he didn't have them because neither of us had any nicotine for a couple of days and his dad finally asked me about it. I said, I never got that pack of cigarettes. I don't know what you're talking about. You might want to talk to your son. Well, then when I went back, after being gone for a couple of days, I had the house cleared out. I bet I had the next door neighbor and my friend's son in the house with me to make sure that I only took my stuff. I didn't fuck with nothing else. And I, I hurried up and I packed a bag. And she took me back to where I had been at, where she picked me up from. And in the time period of her driving less than a half of a mile there and back, she went looking for her kid. And when she found her kid, she found the 13-year-old, and she could smell burning paper in a mobile home. I believe the kid was trying to set the house on fire to blame me for it, saying that I burn everything down out of my anger. But he got caught. And he didn't think that I had witnesses. And that the camera that was stationed in the living room was on. And that it filmed everything I did. The only things it couldn't film were witnessed by another human being because I went off of camera's focus. I went out of his range of view. I would go in the bathroom. It can shoot straight down the hallway and into the master bedroom, but it can't see through walls. I never once entered those children's bedroom. I went into the bathroom and grabbed my shampoo and stuff. 
I went into the be master bedroom that I shared with their father, and I grabbed some clothes, and I was watched the entire time like I was the untrustworthy one in my own home. In a home that I found that came from people who I knew. In a home that I helped him create before this 13-year-old ever moved in. And now, I can't even step foot on that fucking trailer park's property because I'm being repelled. Nobody wants me there. Okay. Y'all have fun living in hell. I hope you see the pictures that I post of my little slice of heaven. same neighbor doesn't even talk to me anymore. She went from telling me that she would be supportive and she would always be my friend and that she would be the go-between between me and my ex so I wouldn't have to talk to him to the very next day telling me she ain't got time for my shit. But I don't know how many times I sat there and listened to hers. How many times I helped her. And the only thing I really ever asked in return from her is a ride to the doctor that I paid her gas money for. Because even when I asked him to watch our dogs while we were gone for a weekend, I came back and there was piss and shit all throughout our house and my dogs were fucking house broke. The only reason why my dogs will pee in a house, period, is if it's a new house and they're marking their territory. Or if they're locked up for so fucking long and nobody can let them out. And on that note, well then, yeah, they're gonna go. You know, I feel like shit because I ain't seen Jack all week, but I felt like shit all week. I haven't felt good. I'm on my three days of rest. I'm slowly starting to feel better, but I still don't feel the greatest. So I'm resting. My body says so. God says so. God made it so cold that I couldn't go out and walk today because I am already not feeling the greatest. I'm already cold and I'm already hurting. And being out and walking is not going to be what I need today. God said. God said if I want to walk, there's a machine inside that house that I can put my music on and I can get on that machine. That's what God said. God said stay at home today. Work at home. Work in your notebook. Work in your good book. Make a new video. Hi guys. How you been? Yeah, you notice, I'm still not inhaling. But I do like the taste. I mean, after tasting nasty ass fucking cigarettes for years, scars actually taste pretty fucking good. <laughs> you do it like when you're tasting wine, just let it roll on your tongue. Well, but you spit the wine out, but I'm just exhaling. No inhale, just exhale. Breathe, bitch, breathe. I haven't had to hit my inhaler as much. I can walk. I walked almost 60 miles last week. Yeah, you know, like five months ago. I couldn't have even walked a mile in one go. And now I'm walking miles before I stop. And when I do stop, it's because I want to see something pretty that I just saw.
I've had some crazy ass adventures going on these last couple of weeks. I found a fitness park, which is like an over, it's like a grown up's playground. It is so cool. And it's a couple blocks away. And I've been going over there and playing. They got the things that you, the, the nets that you climb up and you climb over the pole when you climb back down it. They've got the arm things, because that's where really what I need to work on is my arms now, my arms and my upper back. It's about six blocks away. I love this town. It's like this town was almost specially made for me. I love this town. It's my own little personal slice of heaven. I want to go out 2 o'clock in the morning and sing. Go out 2 o'clock in the morning and sing. I want to go get up on that stage I, got, I showed you guys. I get up on that stage. I want to go to a fitness park at 2 o'clock in the fucking morning. I go to a fitness park at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I don't have to worry about if anybody's going to hurt me. Nobody around here is going to hurt me. It's like there's a protection spell on me or some shit. It's crazy. There's people who I can look at and know that they're the type of people who would hurt somebody, but they won't come near me. I've been told I have a persona about me that tells people, you better be careful, because if you bite me, I will sure as fuck bite you back. And not in a pleasurable way. I walk around and I have a knife on me at all times. And it's on my hip most of the time. People can see it. It's a really pretty knife. It's very shiny. My nephew's son gave it to me. He said, Auntie Mama, you can't be on the bus going from Dayton to, to Michigan and going through cities like Detroit and Columbus without having some kind of protection. Baby boy, I carry your knife every day. It even comes in handy to cut some twine and stuff every once in a while. I miss you. And I love you. There's a whole bunch of people who I miss and I love. But as I told my best friend the other day, when she said, well, when you get your license, you can come back and see us more often. No. Here's the new rule. You want to see me? Come find me. I'm tired of being the one to go to everybody. Every time I've ever moved anywhere, and I've moved away from people, it was always me going to you when you miss me. Well, I've learned how to deal with the longing. I've learned how to deal with missing people. I've lived in enough fucking places and far enough away from y'all. I've learned. There is one person, maybe, maybe a two or three, that I will come back down there for to visit. The ones that I'll come back down there for are the ones I created. If I didn't create you, I'm not traveling for you. Hi, my name's Jessica, and I'm done doing what everybody else wants me to do. You wanna see me? Come to me. It's only four, four and a half hour drive. Oh, I forgot. You're the group of people who say 30 minutes is too far away. So I guess you won't be seeing me. Maybe if you're lucky when I come into town for doctor's appointments. But I got some traveling to do. I got places to go, things to see, people to meet. I got a sweetheart who loves me to fucking death that I plan on coming back to every time I leave. And if he ain't here because he's out working, because he's out driving, well, and I get here and he's not, I'll be here when he comes in. 
if he wants me here. As long as he wants me here, I'll be here. Until he tells me to leave, I'll be here. I'll come back to him every day. Great thing is, he trusts me to walk out that door, walk off this porch, go out into the big old world, meet new people because he knows I need new faces. I can't sit here every day all day long. I have to talk to people. I'm a talker. Come on, guys. I'm a hundred. I'm an hour and thirty-five minutes into this video. I'm a talker. I ain't talked to y'all in a while. He knows that I have work to do outside of this house, and it might not be work that I get paid for. I wish I did. Oh God, that would be great. Wouldn't that be nice to get paid for picking up the trash around this city, for all the steps that I put in, for the miles that I walk. Like he said it the other day when I told him I had I finally hit 30,000 steps one day. And he said, wouldn't it be great if you got paid for all those steps? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, but the problem comes in is when me and him talk about, I, he says, yeah, I think you could go and work maybe 15 hours. I probably could. But here's the problem. Last week, I walked almost 60 fucking miles. And now this week, for the last three days, I've barely been able to walk anything. I got up Tuesday morning. I felt like shit Monday night. I rested all night Monday night. I pumped myself full of fluids. Full of fluids. That's actually out here from last night. I pumped myself full of fluids. Full of calories. Because I need calories to burn off. I burn off calories so quick. I burned off over 3,000 calories the other day, and I know I didn't take that many in. I'm trying to lay off the coffee, drink more juice, more waters. Eat right. Eat. I'm trying to eat at least two times a day. It's not always easy. I need sugar. He doesn't. I'm not diabetic. I'm hypoglycemic. He's diabetic. I need the sugar. He doesn't. So finding a balancing act between his diet and my diet has been fun. I bring things into the house he wants to eat and he'll sneak and eat them. And then he makes food that is good for his diet, but not necessarily mine, so I need that junk food. I hate processed sugar, though. I hate having to eat it, but I need it. Not a lot, it's all in moderation. But I gotta get some pounds back on me, I'm, I've dropped down too many. I have absolutely no fat left on me at all. Like seriously, none, it's all muscle. But the muscle won't stay if I don't put the right things in me. So, that's what has been going on for the last couple weeks since you guys have last heard from me. Just a lot of work on myself. I needed to focus on me for a minute. I did meet some new people. I did make some new friends. But they'll never replace the ones that I've had before. I do love you guys. But I'm not coming back to hell just to see you. I know how to stay away from what's trying to kill me. Do you? I'm not that fucking far away. My sweetheart came and got me after he worked for 12 hours. He's actually gone closer to 13, if not 14 hours. 
in a day by the time he leaves out of here and by the time he comes back. He drove all night, drove a semi all night, got back to his truck and turned around and drove down there to pick me up. It ain't that far. The other reason why the bus ride takes so long is because there's so many other stops. Why does it only fall on me if you want to see me to come to you? Excuse me. Who in the fuck made you all so goddamn motherfucking special? You might be special in my life, but that doesn't mean that I have to be the one and the only one doing the goddamn traveling. I have other places I want to see besides hell. I've seen enough of it. Ohio is too painful for me to be in for too long. You want to see me? Come to heaven. We don't have space to put you up, so be prepared to have a hotel room. Unless you're my children. That's it. I created you. I can find a place to put you up. I love you guys. But I am not a pushover. I never have been. But I did lay down and take it for a while. And right now, the only person I'm laying down and taking anything from is my old man. I willingly will lay down and take it from him. All he gives me is love. That's it. Oh, I'll accept love. I will not accept abuse, neglect, bullshit, addiction. Anymore. I will not accept the blame that others want to put at my feet. They want to tell me that it was all my fault when y'all had your own fucking hands in it. I do not accept your blame. I do not accept to be your scapegoat. I do not accept your help. Your pain. Your burdens. To be placed at my feet. Or on my back. Or in my heart. Do we get this? Are we understanding everything now? I'm not accepting it anymore. Now I've accepted it for a long ass motherfucking time. I accepted the name calling from my family. From the absolute disbelief that I could ever be anything except for a piece of shit that you guys created. That you created. In your own head, created that I am a piece of shit. And then you projected it onto me, telling me I was worthless. That I, I wasn't good enough. Asking me why the hell I was always sad, and why I was always depressed, and why I was always angry. Go look in your own motherfucking mirrors. Take a reflection at your own behaviors. At your own selves. And your behaviors toward me. The way you talk to me. The way you would talk down to me. And the fact that you would let other people talk down to me and never say a goddamn motherfucking word. You just kept your mouth shut. Yeah, you might have gotten me out of this situation, but you never opened your motherfucking mouth and defended me. You left me to do that to myself. For myself. You taught me a long time ago that there will be nobody to take care of me but me. And in order to do that, well, I had to be mean. 
I had to become Jesse. I had to let my devil out. My demon side had to come out because of the things that other people kept putting on me. Their blame and their actions and their behaviors would come back on me. And then everyone's like, but you are in control of yourself. Well, you're right, I am. I am damn right in control of myself. You guys need to be in control of yourselves. Go look in your own motherfucking mirrors. Take a look at yourselves. And then ask yourselves, the way you treated me, is that the way that you would want to be treated yourself? You know, I keep telling everybody, I did, I did not go to my one brother's house. He has plenty of fucking room. He has plenty of space. We probably never even fucking see each other. Except for I know he would have hunted me down. And he's got guns in that house. And I know if I would have stepped foot in that house. And I'm not the only person who's going to say this. Go ask his ex-girlfriends because they'll fucking tell you too. Go ask them. One's getting married here in a couple of weeks. I'm going to her wedding. I'm going to her wedding and she's not marrying my brother. I am the only person in my entire fucking bloodline that is invited to that wedding. Why? Well, because she knows. Jess, you weren't fucking lying. No, honey, I wasn't. More than one of his ex-girlfriends can tell you. I'm friends with more than one. They can tell you. If I would have entered his house, I never would have came out alive. I never would have came off that property, at least. Whether I came out of his house alive, I might have came out of his house alive. He might have said, come on, let's go for a walk in the woods. And then, while we're out in the woods, he would have shot me. He would kill me. And he'd get away with it. Because that's who he is. That's how he is. This is the same brother that chased me down when I was 12 years old in his little fucking Ford Ranger because he was pissed off that my uncle brought me back to my uncle's house that he happened to live at. Because shit was going down at my mom's house. It was the Christmas after our grandma passed away, but he was mad that I was there in the fucking first place. So the day after Christmas, he came in that house, threw me into a floor model TV, tried to beat my ass. I kicked him off of me. I grabbed my shoes, my coat, and I ran out the fucking door. He jumped in his truck and chased me down the street. Same brother. I was 12 and he was 17. It was 1995. The same brother that 12 years ago, when we were moving from Maysville back up to Ohio, had spent three days telling me how big of a piece of shit I am and how every guy I will ever fucking be with is nothing and will never amount to nothing. Fuck you, Nate. The man I'm with. He makes you look like a bitch. Because you are a bitch. You're a bigger bitch than I ever could be. Twelve years ago spent three days degrading me. In front of our parents. In front of our brother. In front of others in our family. And they let him. They stood back. And then they laughed about some of the shit he said. Like any of it was ever fucking funny. And when I finally opened my mouth to defend myself or say anything against him. That piece of shit had the nerve to get up and act like he was going to punch me in my face as I sat in a chair like I am now. He stood at me over top of me at 5 foot 10 inches tall as I sat in a chair like many others want to do, it seems the only time that you can come at me is if I'm sitting, huh? Fuck you. Come at my face. Without your goddamn guns. Let's see who's gonna win in a fist fight now. Because I might be littler than you, but I swear to God I'm crazier. You might be a fucking psychopath, but I am one hell of a bitch when I'm pissed off. And you know what they say. 
Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I've got the scars to prove just how scorned I've been by all of you. Let Nate talk to me like that. Let him be that way to me. And then when I fucking defend myself, you tell me to go in the house? When he comes after me with a two-by-four? And you want to ask me stupid-ass questions when I get diagnosed with PTSD? Like, well, why would you ever have PTSD? I had one brother who literally beat the shit out of me on a regular fucking basis and treated me like I was his goddamn wrestling dummy. I had another one, who I just told you about, who chased me down with a fucking truck trying to run me over, and the only reason he didn't is because I ran up a fucking snow-covered hill, and his little Ford Ranger was only two-wheel drive and he couldn't make it up it. My favorite brother, as everybody likes to try to say, because I don't have a favorite brother, but I do have one I'm closest to, has been a drug addict, and in and out of jail and prison, most of my life. I mean, since I was a kid, he went to juvenile prison with my oldest brother for doing dumb shit when I was still in, like, kindergarten and first grade. I remember taking a road trip to go from one juvenile prison to another juvenile prison to do visiting day with him. If I was a first grader or kindergarten or first grader, I went into juvenile prisons to visit my brothers. My oldest brother is a sound man, and I can remember a time when he recorded me singing that he intentionally, come the fuck on, you're gonna admit it now. Fucked up my songs because I wasn't his favorite singer that night. He liked some other girl who wasn't even related to him. He thought she had more talent than I did. Where's she at now? And when I asked you for help a couple months ago, you told me no. After you have put up people who are not even related to you at all. You can put somebody else up who has absolutely no blood relation to you, but when your baby sister needed help. Fuck you, Jessica. And then y'all want to know why. I'm so depressed. Why I don't want to come back to Ohio. Why, honestly, for the majority of anybody who I know back in that town, that state, besides for a handful, you all can kiss my lily white ass because it is one part of me that never sees the sunlight. And once you're done taking the reflections at yourself and you realize just how much damage you all have done, I, I, and we can even take this a little step further, to some extended family who decided that I wasn't worth getting to know either. Or that you don't like me because of who my father was. He was your fucking brother. He is your fucking brother. If you don't like him, then you don't fucking like yourselves. You came from the same motherfucking place. Same blood runs in your fucking veins that ran in his and the one who wanted to go through the family and lie fuck you bitch yeah you can go ahead and tell her I said that auntie tell your sister that her niece thinks she's nothing but a bitch the way you talked to me when we were at the fucking hospital when your brother was dying what did you say to him when you went in that goddamn room why did you want to go in there alone why wouldn't you walk in there with me because you fucking knew I would have went the fuck off on anything you had to say to that man. He left you alone. He left everybody alone. He tried to live out the last of his years in peace and he sure as fuck didn't get that. So that's what I'm going to try to do.
I'm going to live out the rest of my years in as much peace away from the hell that you guys want to bring upon me that you have brought upon me for 39 years burn marks scars physical, mental, emotional, spiritual you took my spirituality from me why? My number one question to everybody, besides the few that I know what I did wrong, that I know how I wronged you, because trust me, there's a handful of y'all, man, or more than a handful, there's a group, there's, there's a big group of y'all that I've been working really hard at trying to make amends for the things that I've done to you. It wasn't all just you, but to the ones that I was born into, to the who are older than me, my mother, to my brothers, to my aunts. Not all my aunts. I have two aunties that I absolutely love. I have a third one who I'm okay with. My step aunt, I'm absolutely, we're going to say step aunt because she's my dad's stepsister. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. You are amazing. To my uncles. Uh, not Uncle Bobby. Not Uncle Eddie. I didn't Uncle Eddie's gone. What did I ever do to you? To make you hate me. Don't tell me you love me. Don't ever tell me you love me again. Because your actions have screamed the exact opposite of I love you. Your actions have screamed that for some reason you feel that I am evil. And I know that's not true. I can't do to people what other people do to me. I do hit my breaking point, and when I hit my breaking point, it gets really bad. It takes so much, though, to get me there. As Mary Ellen used to say to me, Jessica, you have the patience of a saint. Even saints have breaking points. And I want to know what the fuck I ever did to any of you that I'm blood-related to. To make you hate me. As a child. I'm not talking about as an adult. I'm talking about what the fuck did I ever do to my brothers besides be born? Hey, what the hell did I ever do to my mother besides be born? My stepdad, I never asked for you to marry her. You chose to marry her. And then for years you treated me like I was a pariah in your relationship. You knew she came with baggage when you fucking married her. You shouldn't have married her if you didn't want to be a father. To anybody who's ever dating a mother, or to any mother who, or to any female who ever gets with a single father, or a man who actually has anything to do with his kids, understand this. When you date somebody who has children, you then do become a parent to those children. parent. You have to teach them right. Not wrong. You have to teach them right. What's right. What's correct. What's appropriate. You cannot go against what the mother or father is saying for those children because you don't agree with it. It doesn't matter if you agree with it. It matters what the parent says. But when you date somebody when you get with somebody, when you are serious with somebody who has children, understand that parent and those children are a packaged motherfucking deal. 
And just because things might be away when you first get together, you might get with them and they might not have custody of their kids. But they might eventually get custody of their kids. Or they might have custody of your kids when you get with them and then they might lose custody of their kids. I've had that happen to me. I had custody of my kids. I got married. I got married. To somebody who was not their father. And then a month later, my mother, stepfather, and my youngest son's dad ganged up together to take my kids from me. It took three of them. And then it took a whole board of people from my son, my oldest son's, or my youngest son's dad. He brought in like 20 people into court. Most of them didn't even know me. And they came in to testify about things that they knew about me. But if you don't know me, how can you testify about anything against me? You don't know me. You don't know who I am or what I've lived through. You have no fucking clue. Maybe if you're dead, you'd shut your fucking mouths. Because I am so sick of people wanting to run their motherfucking mouths. Wanting to say shit. I'm also sick of people not hearing me when I say I'm in a relationship. I'm in a relationship. I come home to him. I get to walk out the door. I get to go explore. I come home to him. To his arms. Where he comes home to mine. This is his home. He's letting me be a part of it. To the rest of you, I didn't do shit to you when I was a kid. I especially didn't do nothing to you as a baby. To whichever one of you decided to take the iron to my fucking wrist. Don't tell me I fucking pulled it down on myself either. That's just stupid. That story doesn't match up anymore. To the ones who decided that as a child, as a baby, as a child, as a young child, and I do mean young baby child, I mean I was like five and six, and they decided to hurt me physically, degrade me, and make me feel like I was never worth anything. Fuck you. You're the worthless ones. You're the pieces of shit. Anybody who would ever do that to a child. Take an iron to a baby's wrist. Every day, put them in fucked up, twisted states for your own guilty pleasure, for your own fucked up pleasure. Because I didn't do that shit to anybody's kids, including my own, but especially my own. But I sure as fuck didn't do that to anybody else's kids. Just because somebody does it to me doesn't mean it makes it fucking right for me to turn around and do it to somebody else. Two wrongs do not make a right. And an eye for an eye is just fucked up. Because all that ends up doing is making you both black. If you're going to do an eye for an eye, do an eye for an eye for the good things that people do for you. Somebody helps you, you help them out. Not if somebody harms you or hurts you, do you turn around and harm them and hurt them back. It's not, that's, it's not a good way to live. Revenge is never a good thing to get. It's always, like I say, it's a, a dish best served cold. The best revenge is to get up and move on with your life and do better. Let them see it. Let them see you happy. Let them see you glowing with that light that shines from inside you. Not the hell's fire. Use that for doing things like singing and dancing. But that shining light that makes people want to be like, hey, she seems like a nice person, or he seems like a cool person. That shining light that attracts people. Use that. Be good.
do for others as you want done unto yourself. These are all good rules that religion teaches. The only problem is, is that humans tend to forget them. God said, do unto others as you want done unto yourself. So, who wants me to take an iron to them then? Any takers? No. Who wants me to throw them down a hallway? Who wants me to put them in full Nelsons, half Nelsons, and throw them across the fucking living room? No takers. Because you don't want me to do unto you as you've done unto me. You want me to be the nice, sweet Jessica. That loves. That helps. You want me to come over and help clean your house. You want me to watch your kids. You want me to teach them better ways. You don't want me to inflict the harm that you have inflicted upon me back to you. Then stop it. Stop doing it to me. Stop doing it to others. Stop doing it to everybody. Do unto others as you want done unto yourself. Learn something. Lord knows y'all need to learn something. Some old school way. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't kill. Stop projecting your bullshit on everybody else. Accept your own pain for your own pain and fucking deal with it. I'm tired of feeling all y'all's pain. I'm just fucking tired. But I'm two hours into this video, so I'm going to go ahead and upload it. I hope y'all had a great couple of weeks. I hope you have a great however long until I make my next one. Here soon I, I will be up and recording me performing something. I have no idea what yet. I might just set the camera up and go at it. I have no idea. But I'm about there. I'm about ready to show you guys the progress I've made since the beginning. Good luck, everybody. I know I need it. Ah, uh, no, I don't. I'm blessed. Stay blessed. Be blessed. Apono, Apono. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive. Thank you. Learn it, love it, live it. It will change your lives for the better. Have a great day, guys. Bye. I love you.